going to be showing you how to make my pie. And today I'm going to make sweet potato pie, but first I'm going to actually just um, make the pie crust, which you of course can use for any pie recipe. And if you prefer the graham cracker crust type, I might do that on a later video, but for today I'm going to just do the regular pie crust. So you're going to need some Crisco, some salt, some flour, and a little bit of sugar, as well as a little bit of butter. And those are the only five ingredients that are in pie crust, other than, of course, water. So we're going to do ice water at the end. So just to start, you're going to get a bowl. To actually be doing a one crust sweet potato pie in this glass pan. And then I always do like one to, one to eat and one to share in just a disposable tin. So this is a little bit of a smaller tin. So I'm going to do enough for what would be a two crust pie because I'm making two single crusts. So I just kind of start by pouring out um, quite a bit of flour. About that much or so. And then you definitely don't want your pie crust to be bland, so I put in some salt. And I like to put in just a little bit of sugar. Not everybody puts sugar in. I don't put like too much, just a little, little bit of it just to kind of take the edge off of the salt. And you want to kind of feel the flour and the salt and you can kind of feel if there's enough salt in there just with your fingers. I feel like it needs maybe a little bit more. Um, it should feel like you can feel the grains. It's mostly flour, but you can kind of like feel that there's enough salt. And then you are going to add your shortening. And with the shortening, I just kind of, again, eyeball it like everything. Um, that looks about good. You want it to be enough shortening for it to be a nice flaky crust, but you don't want it to be gobbed down with shortening to the point where it's too heavy. Um, I'm actually going to add in just a little bit of butter here because I like a little bit of butter, just a, like the little bit of flavor that the butter gives. Not a lot, I just usually put in, um, what is that, like two tablespoons or so? All right. Now you cannot make a pie without one tool in particular. I mean, you can use two butter knives, but without an actual pastry blender, it's really hard to get that shortening cut up right into the flour. I've done it with the two butter knives plenty of times, but it just doesn't turn out quite as nice, quite as flaky. So you're just gonna kind of push that pastry blender in through the shortening in the flour and just kind of turn it like this to make sure that you have lots of flour coating that shortening while you are blending it in. And you want it to kind of be cut up to the point where it looks like little pieces of corn or, you know, maybe just like a little pinch of the shortening in places or smaller. You don't want to overwork it but definitely get that shortening well distributed because if you have a big chunk of it, that's not going to do well in your pastry. And it's going to be a little harder to cut up the butter just because it's so cold. Some people even chill their shortening just to make it a little stiffer, but I don't really do that. So usually cooking on the fly. I don't have time for extra steps. So you kind of cut it up until it's about like that. 
nice and evenly distributed. There's not too much shortening, there's not too much flour. And then your another really important trick is that you're going to need to get ice water. Just regular water is not sufficient. You really do need to have ice water for the pie crust. So I'm going to just grab a little bit of water in a cup and then also grab a little bit of ice. You don't need a ton of ice, just enough to really chill the water down. You're not going to actually put ice into the pie crust. You're just um, using the ice to cool the water because you want it to be chilled down. Hi, Langston. What you doing? What you looking for? You want a piece of ice? Here. You heard, you heard the ice, huh? Langston likes to eat ice. Yes, he has ice. Do you want more? Okay. <laughs> so you're gonna just kinda like twirl that around until it gets really cold. And then, without putting the ice in, you're gonna just pour the water so it looks about right and use your fork to just kind of toss it. You can also just kind of do this with the bowl to see if the flour is grabbing that water, if you need more. You really don't want to overwork this step because if you over stir it or use a mix or anything like that, it's going to make your pie crust really stiff and tough and like chewy. You don't want that. You want it to be light and fluffy and just to fall apart. So you can see how that's kind of coming together. That's really what you want. Add just a little bit more water and then we will be ready to roll it out. All right. So when it's kind of just by itself coming into a ball like that, that's when you know that you have mixed it properly <clears throat> and you're ready to roll it out. So of course, you're going to need enough space on your work surface to roll that pie crust out. And I'm going to move everything. I have such a small kitchen that it really is a challenge some days to work with very little counter space but I make do. All right, so what you're going to do is go ahead and just kind of sift out or pour out a, enough flour to where it's not gonna stick. And then just very carefully, you wanna treat this with a lot of TLC because if you overwork this pie crust, again, it is going to get stiff and it's not gonna it's not gonna be good. So you're gonna just take out a ball, about that much is going to make one crust. And just kind of pat the top with a little bit of flour and get your rolling pin. Grab your rolling pin and just gently roll. I'm already running out of space over here. Now ideally, put enough flour underneath to where it's not going to stick to the cupboard. <coughs> Sometimes um, I don't quite put enough flour underneath and it'll stick and I'll show you if it does that I'll just show you how to kind of get it up. But you want to roll that enough to where when you put your pie tin or pie pan it's going to um, kind of overlap. These are kind of the edges, so you can kind of see that it overlaps a little bit there. And then you can go ahead and take the edge, and it looks like mine did not stick, which is great. And you just kind of fold it up and then put your tin down and unfold it 
into the tin. Don't worry if it tears apart. The If it does tear apart, that's a good sign that your crust is actually gonna be really flaky. But if you do it with enough finesse, um, you can get it to where it doesn't tear apart if you do it really quickly. So anyway, so you're gonna wanna have your pie crust just kind of pat it into the pan so that it's evenly distributed all the way around. And then I just grab a um, butter knife or you can use something else. And I actually just go with the side of the pan. Some people like more crust and you can, you know, cut it past the side of the pan if you like more crust, but I just kind of go to the side of the pan, cut that crust off all the way around, set that aside. And you've got your nice pie crust there. And then I just kind of take that edge and turn it under like that and then pinch that against the pan so that it overlaps just a little bit and do that all the way around <clears throat> you can probably tell if somebody hasn't made pie very much because they're gonna be a little bit slower at this process again you don't want to go too slow or overthink it too much or you will make that crust tough and then once it's nicely even all the way around, I just go ahead and take these two fingers and this finger like that and pinch. So I'm just pinching and then I'm tucking with this one. And that is how I do my little pie crust flute all the way around. I'm usually not super picky about it because when it actually bakes, that shortening is gonna melt and it'll kind of like even out your rough edges if you have any little bumps or lumps here and there. Again, the main thing is you want that crust to be um, super flaky, so you just don't want to overwork it. So that is your finished pie crust. Now at this stage, you can prick the bottom of the pan with you can use the same fork that you're using to mix and just kind of prick the bottom. You don't want to go all the way through if it's a pie that, like you don't want to hear the foil when you prick if it's a pie that is going to be um, poured in, the filling. Um, so just kind of prick the bottom. And then what I do is melt um, just one teaspoon of butter going to melt one teaspoon or tablespoon sorry of butter and it doesn't have to be exact it's just basically enough to brush the bottom of the pie crust with so about that much butter um, I'm just going to melt that and uh, brush the bottom of the crust with it and then it will be ready to bake Okay, so that butter has melted and I'm probably not even gonna use all of it, but I just take a brush like this, paint brush that I use for the kitchen instead of actually painting. And I just brush the bottom of it. And if you're gonna make like a lemon ring pie or any kind of pie that is going to be chilled, you can definitely just bake this all the way at this point. But today, since I'm doing the sweet potato pie, I'm actually going to be um, making this with baking it, but I'm gonna pre-bake it just for a minute because I don't want that the bottom of the crust to be soggy at all. And so when I pre-bake it, I'm gonna actually add just a little bit of sugar to that butter just to kind of set the bottom of the crust. Just a little sprinkle there. And I'm gonna just bake it like that. And as soon as it comes out of the oven, I'm just gonna bake it for like 15 minutes or so until it's set. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Now, be I'm gonna set this aside actually for now while I heat my oven up. And I'm going to heat it up to 400. Now you're gonna see me do it all over again because I am doing this second crust. Um, 
So I go ahead with the flour, distribute the flour again, and you're going to get your second ball of dough again very carefully so that you don't overwork it. Just kind of gather it together as you put it onto the surface. You don't want to do a lot of squeezing or kneading or anything like that. And then um, turn it over and we're going to roll that second one out. <clears throat> And this will give you two nice pies. I just think it, as long as you're gonna go to the work of making a pie, you might as well make one to give away as well. So um, I, don't, I don't want to eat two pies <laughs> myself. And I know that my kids are not big pie fans. Now my sister is a pieaholic. I mean, she just loves pies. So this, one, this video is really for her more than anything because um, she loves my pies and she's probably going to be the one who gets that other extra pie. But anyway, so we roll that all the way out and get, you can see that it's a little bit bigger this time. Um, because it's the metal pie pan. Again, you just want it to be like, if you set the pie pan on it, you want it to kind of overlap the pie pan. So once again, I'm going to just fold that up. Thanks, Dan. What do you need, honey? What do you need? You want a snack? This one's just in and out of here today. So we're just going to fold this. Actually, for the bigger ones, I like to just fold it in half so that you can kind of um, just pick it up and move it bit you kind of fold it in half and then fold it this way and just set it in there um, so that was a good transfer and it's again going to just overlap the edges of your pan and if you want a huge crust on the outside you can cut it out past that Pan. If you want just kind of like an average type of crust, um, just grab your butter knife or a sharper knife than that, whatever, and just cut it right along, you know, just holding it, holding down the edge with this hand, just kind of cut it right along the pan. Just kind of use the pan as a guide. It's just easy to do it that way. Now we have extra dough we have extra dough from two different what from two different um pie crusts and we can use that extra dough actually for you can just brush it with butter and sprinkle it with cinnamon and sugar and put it on a sheet pan and put that in the oven for a little treat or you can um roll it out and make a small pie or do some little individual pies or whatever you want to do with it. Or if you feel like you don't need more pie, it is after all just flour and salt and you know shortening so it's not like it's a super big waste. So again you're going to just fold over that crust all the way around and then using these, these two fingers and this one, pinch it all the way around. And keep going. All the way around. And then kind of sometimes I just grab my fingers and kind of clean up that. Now it's of course gonna be time to wash my hands after this one. Um, you can just get flowery and stuff. So I'm gonna, again, prick the bottom, but not pricking all the way. That one kind of went all the way through. You don't wanna hear the pie pan, otherwise that filling might spill out. It'll probably puff up enough for that one spot, but you just don't want a whole bunch of holes in the bottom. The pricking though helps it to not bubble up too much. And you can see that the melted butter is still um, plenty liquidy right now. And so I'm just gonna grab that same butter and 
just brush it across the bottom. You don't need to brush it up the sides, just the bottom. Just again, it kind of helps it not be too soggy if you're gonna have a very moist pie filling. You could probably just do this for like any pie, but something like apple pie, I don't usually do this particular step for because the filling isn't as liquid as a sweet potato pie. What, honey? All right, so I the oven is not quite preheated, so we're gonna make sure that it's preheated. And then we are going to put both of these in the oven and I will be right back. And notice I've got flour all over my front, which is, you know, to be expected when you're making a pie. Okay, so that oven is fully heated and the pies are in there, the shells are in there baking just for about 15 minutes. So meanwhile, while that's happening, you're gonna grab um, probably three, two or three sweet potato, probably two for the small one and then um, three for the bigger one for the pies and for the bigger pie shell. And then you're going to chop them up. So I already chopped up five sweet potatoes that are just like an average size, not huge ones, not super tiny ones. Um, so you're gonna chop them up and boil these in kind of lightly salted water until, um, just until they're like really tender. You don't want them to be too chewy or like to just barely break apart, you want them to be like really tender. So we're gonna boil these. You can also just boil them with the skin on, but it takes longer and again, I like to do things quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and get these boiling and once they're tender, we'll come back with the next step. Okay, so the pie crusts have come out of the oven and they are still kind of hot, but you can see they're just nice and set but not um, not browned, because you want to save that browning. You, know, you can just start to see a little bit of golden brown on them, but they're not brown. Um, <clears throat> you want to save the browning for when they actually cook with the filling in them. So instead of a bowl for sweet potato pie filling, I actually use a um, blender, and you're going to need um, two and a half eggs, which I have actually already cracked in this bowl. And you want to use more of the yolk of the third egg than of the white. Also some evaporated milk, some melted butter, one stick of melted butter, some molasses, and some cinnamon, as well as some nutmeg, and um, pumpkin pie spice, or you can just use your own. Also, brown sugar and regular sugar. So that's going to be, and of course, your sweet potatoes. So that's going to kind of be the ingredients that we're going to blend up into here once our sweet potatoes are done and they're getting done pretty quickly. Now, these blades on this particular blender are really sharp. This is a Ninja um, blender from Costco. It's like just the basic model, but it works really well. It actually works better than using a hand mixer or a whisk or a fork or anything like that to um, get that sweet potato uh, puree really blended up nice and smoothly. So we'll be back with the sweet potatoes and make the filling and pop the pies in the oven. Okay, so we are back and ready to make the filling for the two pies. And I'm gonna go ahead and dump my eggs two and a half eggs in the blender and my stick of melted butter. I'm gonna make sure that the bowl is all the way emptied out on that one. Um, I'm also gonna add just a pour of this evaporated milk. You can also use some um, whole milk or half and half or cream or whatever you have handy. Um, I'm going to put in some brown sugar. And brown sugar is not very, it's, 
I, for some reason, when it gets to the bottom of the bag, it always gets um, hard and it's hard to break that up. So I'm actually going to mostly use the white sugar with the molasses. <clears throat> the molasses is basically what brown sugar has in it anyway. So we're gonna just put, put in a fair amount of sugar. A little bit of molasses and a little bit more sugar. Okay. All right, now we're going to add the sweet potatoes. These are the these are cooked obviously. They're pretty hot still. You're just going to kind of fill up the blender, most of the blender, with these guys. That looks about right. And now I'm going to add my cinnamon. Just however much you feel like you need. A bit of the pumpkin pie spice. And... A little bit of extra nutmeg and I'm also going to add just a, a tad bit of lemon juice just a little splash just to kind of give it a little bit of zest um, but a little bit more sugar on top a little touch more of the evaporated milk lid on and we're going to blend it and this again just works better in my opinion than actually using a stand mixer for this particular dish okay so once that is nice and blended I'm going to actually add also a splash of vanilla which I forgot about earlier, and just continue to blend um, that until everything is really well mixed. Okay, so once that's all blended, you're gonna just take that off of your blender base, and we are going to be ready to fill our pies. Meanwhile, you have re reheated your oven to 350. So the first time you bake those crusts at 400 degrees and the second time you bake them at 350 and you want to just kind of fill them nicely up. I always hope that like you're eyeballing it paid off and works for the right amounts. That looks pretty good. All right. So we are going to just kind of even those up off the top and pop these in the oven and bake them until a knife, a butter knife comes out clean in the middle. We take this commercial break to see what Langston's doing. Looks like he's eating a popsicle or two. So these are the pies in the oven and you wanna make sure that um, they are in the bottom rack, not in the top because you don't want that crust to over brown. Tested this one with a butter knife and it came out clean. And then um, this is the other one I didn't really need to test it you can see that there are some areas that have kind of browned on top and that really also shows that it is done um, when you kind of gently touch at the surface you can see it kind of bounce back and that also indicates that it's done so these are the two pies ready to cool and then we will okay so i'm just kidding because i can't wait for these to cool I, I always have to try a piece 
So what I do is I actually start my cut where I inserted that butter knife and um, then go ahead and cut, you know, a regular piece. Now it will cut a lot smoother and cleaner if you cut it after it's cooled, but I just need to taste it because the whole house smells so good right now with um, this baked sweet potato pie. The other reason why I do my crust the way that I do is because, you know, when you have crust that comes up over the edge, that is always breaking off when you cut into it and serve it. And so by trimming the crust just around evenly with the pan and then tucking it under and um, fluting it around like I showed in, in the video, it comes out like really easily out of the side of the pie pan so that literally you don't have like that breakage where the back side of your pie just like falls off. Um, so you can see how nicely that cut and it's all the way done inside. And it looks like this is gonna be really good. Now, we probably should have some whipped cream for this, which I did not have ready. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little taste. And it looks like the crust is perfect. It's not soggy. It's just right. Hmm. Flavor is so good. And you can see with the pastry, um, I'm just gonna kind of like bring a piece of it up a little closer. You can see like how flaky that is and how it just breaks apart. It's not tough at all. Uh, and that's kind of what you want. Mm. It just falls apart in your mouth. That's definitely what you want for pie. Sweet potato pie is definitely better when it's cold, but I just had to eat some now because I'm hungry. It's very moist, very buttery. The pie is, the crust is very flaky. Just falls apart in your mouth. And this will be so good with whipped cream. So I think I'm going to go to the store in the morning and get some whipped cream. Cause it's perfect. And I just realized that I actually cut into the pie that I'm gonna give away. But anyway, that's probably going to my sister. She won't care that there's a piece missing. And I might actually give this one away as well just because I'm already feeling guilty just eating one piece. And if this sticks around, I am seriously gonna eat quite a bit of this pie. It's so good. And one more time, just with the the crust, you know, the flakiness of it. I don't know if you can see inside there, but you definitely want those layers of, um, those kind of flaky layers so that when you bite into it, it just falls apart in your mouth. So I hope you enjoy sweet potato pie recipe. There are a lot of substitutions that you can make for different parts of it, like for the milk, you can substitute um, cream or half and half or even whole milk or almond milk or coconut milk if it's thicker, like maybe like the thicker coconut milk that's got some of the um, coconut uh, condensed part blended into it, not just the thin coconut milk you eat with cereal. You can also substitute um, I'm not sure if you can really substitute anything for the eggs. Kind of need those. Um, but the butter, you could probably use a butter substitute. Wouldn't quite be the same. You can't really substitute anything for the Crisco because it's really what makes that crust so flaky. Um, <clears throat> you can use just cinnamon if you don't have nutmeg or pumpkin pie spice. You can use cinnamon and nutmeg and no pumpkin pie spice. What else? You can also use like the white sweet potatoes instead of the, the um, 
red sweet potatoes, they turn out actually a little bit sweeter. So if you use those, you don't have to use quite as much sugar. Um, so good. What else? For the flour, I've never made it with any other kind of flour. I'm not a gluten-free person, so I don't know what you could substitute for that. You might try like almond flour or spelt or something like that if you want. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm like burning my tongue, but it's just too good. <laughs> Yeah, so enjoy this and, it, and once again like even with this one once it's cut into that pie will just easily you can see that it's just going to easily come out instead of getting hooked on the side of the pan and breaking when you serve it it's always hard to get that pie server up under that crust and then down if you're just putting it straight down to lift up the pie it just comes out so much so much easier and you have perfect slices every time I've been making pies for years and years and honestly I grew up eating pumpkin pie probably no big surprise to anybody because I was raised in Montana but once I um, moved to Mississippi and tasted sweet potato pie I never looked back but by then I already knew how to make a pie crust, so it was an easy transition. And I honestly can't eat pumpkin pie anymore because sweet potato pie is just so good. I think it's something about the texture and the flavor undertones. It's not as, um, like I don't know, sticky or gooey. or There's something about pumpkin pie that just kind of grosses me out now. But I love sweet potato pie, so... Um, you know, you should try it. If you've only had pumpkin pie, you definitely have to try sweet potato pie, but make sure you try a good one. And then, you know, see if you still like pumpkin pie. You might like both. I just personally really prefer sweet potato pie. And it's so good. Like I said, with whipped cream, it's, oh, it's so good. Or you can even put ice cream, vanilla ice cream on it. But, <clears throat> of course, that's going to rack up even more calories. As you can see, I need to lose weight. But, you know, they say don't, don't trust a skinny cook. I don't know if that's really true. <laughs> there are probably a lot of thin people out there that can really cook. But I cook a lot for my kids. And obviously, I eat what I cook, too. So... That ends up being a problem. But I'm kind of over it. I mean, I'm 41. I'll be 42 this year. Like, I can have a piece of pie, right? I mean, if I don't have pie, I don't have anything with sugar, and I don't have, like, anything that basically tastes good, then I am just even more depressed than with life in general, so... Food just kind of helps, like, make you feel nurtured and comforted, kind of cheers you up. So as long as I'm not, like, morbidly obese, I kind of tell myself I can go ahead and have a piece of pie. But, as you can see, I will eat the whole piece of pie. The crust is perfectly salted. Flavor is amazing. The filling is perfect. I'm sorry that I don't use um, measurements. Like, I know that that would probably help a lot of people. But I just, I don't even have measuring cup. I have, like, one measuring cup, which you saw, I think, at one point in part of the video. I have, like, literally one measuring cup, and it's just a cup. So I think I use it for like scooping cereal and other things more than I ever use it for measuring. But once again, great pies and you can make one to eat 
and one to share and go ahead and make your neighbor's day. I hope you enjoy this recipe. Let me know your thoughts.